Welcome to your latest Nottingham Forest news coming up on today's episode. Sosa is a here we go. The Forest Away kit has been leaked as we've told you already. And a city ground update on the new shipping containers. And who has won the home kit given away by our good friends at Lindley's. All this and plenty more coming up today on your latest Forest news. Let's get into it. Ramon Sosa is a red. Welcome to your latest Forest News. Good morning, good evening or good night. Hope you guys are doing well and welcome to an action-packed episode where we're going to tell you about all the transfer news. We're going to tell you about the Sosa deal and we will tell you who's won the home kit courtesy of Lindley. Guys, if you're enjoying the content, Please don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. And I have one question on my mind right now. What is hotter? Is it the weather currently or the transfer window that Forest are putting together? Let me know down in the comments below. Okay, before we talk about um, Sosa and the deal, let's cut across to our good mate Ryan at Lindley's Auto Center, and he is gonna reveal who has won the Forest kit. Ryan, over to you, mate. Hi guys, Ryan from Lindley's Auto Centers. Thanks so much to everybody for entering the competition. We really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed a bit of fun. So we've chosen the top three. We're gonna give a shirt away to the number one winner, but our favorites from the top three was uh, Oil Check Kiate, brilliant. Murillo Kintyre, amazing and our winner was brian bailey 4601 on youtube who's put matt U matt's used car salesman amazing made us laugh thanks so much check us out lindleys.co.uk many many congratulations to brian bailey make sure you drop us a whatsapp message or a dm or whatever take your pick there get in touch with us we'll get your details and lindley's will get the kit out to you there was some cracking entries in there so well done to everyone who got creative but lindley's aren't stopping there guys they've got another offer for you lot on your tires if you use code lindley fa23 you can get 15 pounds off two falcon tires or if you're looking for a set of four they'll do 40 quid off the tires and they'll also offer mobile fitting because that's the kind of service they provide if you need some new tires like my wife's car does then make sure you go check out the website right now lindley.co.uk scan that qr code or click in the link that's pinned in the comments down below. Okay, let's jump into the news and let's start with the latest red, Sosa. Okay, so Raman Sosa, the guy that's been back and forth, back and forth with Forrest, is a red subject to a medical. Now that medical is happening today. That's what we're being told. The fees have been verbally agreed. Everything's in place. It's going to be about 15 million euros plus a few in add-ons as well. He's going to sign a five-year deal, keeping him at the city ground, well, at least in theory, until 2029. And he, as we told you yesterday, is well up for the move to Nottingham Forest. This is a player who... I think is quality. I just don't know how he fits in. And I'm so excited and intrigued to see how Nuno pieces all these jigsaw pieces together onto the board and what team he is going to produce. Now, it's obviously going to be too early to see him tonight in the Villarreal match. Don't forget, we'll have the watch along as always for that for you guys kicking off probably about 7.40 tonight. And he is going to be revealed very, very soon for Nottingham Forest. When that will be, we don't quite know. Obviously, the medical needs to go through smoothly. But this team is shaping up and shaping up really, really nicely. Nuno has gotten the two wingers he wanted. He wanted two. He's been given Jutta from Maranakis, and now he's been given Sosa. So that's the wingers ticked off. And I am going to keep harping on about this. The next links now need to be to 
a striker. So we're digging away to see if there's anything coming, um, you know, up from the sources we know. At the moment, all we're hearing about is a bunch of kids that are being linked, which is good. They will be the future and what have you. But we need someone in the here and now. So Forrest, if you're watching, start getting those strikers Put on a short list, no doubt they've already done that. And let's start getting those links out to the fans and making sure we can build some hype up around it. But your news today is that Sosa is done. How are you guys feeling about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Alrighty then, let's move on to some fun stuff and that's the away kit. And this is something we told you guys about weeks and weeks ago. For all those who are like, oh, FFTV know nothing, man. Hmm. They're all silent right now. As we put a video out yesterday of the leak kit, here's a little snippet for you now. Brucey e, looking very good. Sunny boy Jim right there in the kit, mixing it up with all the Forest players. And that kit is fire for me. I like this kit better than the home kit. I don't know why. I just feel it's got a bit more of a design to it. And that's being released as well today. So you should be able to get hold of it. The club will officially announce it later. Look, I'm not a huge fan of leaks. If I'm being honest with you, it's like you got all those player leaks on games like FIFA and stuff kind of ruin the fun. But Forests just take too long sometimes to get these things out in the open. I mean, it's two weeks or uh, less than two weeks now from the Premier League kicking off. We should have had all these kits out early on. It would have been a good revenue earner for Forest as well. Now, the kit prices are probably going to be the same as the home kit. 75 quid plus your name, your Premier League badge and all that crap probably brings you up to 95, 96. I think it was maybe 97 quid in total. It's a ripoff. There's no two ways of looking at it. But we are, you know, in love with this club and we'll probably end up buying these kits. So what do you think of this kit? Do you prefer it to the home kit? Now, in terms of the third kit, again, we don't know it. I haven't seen it. I can't give you any intel on it. Apart from the color is meant to be sky blue. Now, I've seen some designs. They look close to the mark to me where there's like a strip down the middle of a light sky blue one and then some darker blues either side. I don't know if that's the kit, but I've seen enough of that to make me think that potentially it could be the one. But I can't tell you what I don't know, unfortunately. So that kit's been leaked. It will be out, I think, probably 9 a.m. Um, but if you guys are watching this later, then it is probably out. You, you know, you know it's the weird world of time and everything right now. So that's the kit done. How do you guys feel about it? Let me know which kit you prefer in the comments down below. So let's give you some exclusive news now on the shipping container, should we call them that, um, at the city ground that being put up. And these, as we told you a couple of weeks ago, will be ready for, we believe, the third home game of the season. Now, what we've been able to uncover exclusively here at FFTV is the amount of capacity it will have. And that's going to be 180. And the overall cost of the shipping container is going to be a whopping three million pounds. Now, OK, that probably isn't a lot in the greater scheme of things. We know a stadium redevelopment could cost us anywhere from 200 million plus a brand new stadium. You're looking at 600 million So three million is not that steep in terms of, you know, the overall cost. But the return of 180 seats. Now, what we're not sure about yet and what we can't confirm is if that will be the general viewing seats, because there's going to be a couple of rows at the bottom. Will that capacity be 180 or is that inclusive of all the expensive seats that are going to be in there? The boxes within the box. Now, we know they're going to be expensive. We know they're looking at it to be like a executive corporate style thing going on there. They're going to really posh it up in there. Is that going to be enough to generate a return on this? I mean, how much would they have to charge for that to be feasible? And how long would these have to be up for a return on the investment? And it does make me think, and this is now me speculating, that we may be seeing these in place or at least the one between the Trent and the Cluffy end for a couple of seasons, just at the very least to get a return on the investment. 
Now, Forest are going to have to get a move on if they're going to hit the target of getting this done by the third home game of the season because there's nothing there at the moment. We've seen currently a new screen going into the trend end, again, towards the Cluffy side, but it's almost flat on facing, um, you know, towards the Peter Taylor stand. And I'm trying to figure out how or who is going to be able to see it. I mean, the screen looks nice, but... In terms of where it's placed, I don't know how it's going to work. We'll have to see how that one fits. But there's a lot of changes going on at the city ground as well. We know Marinakis is getting his own personal suite. That's still under development. That, to me, I don't think is going to be done in time for the start of the season. So Forest really need to get a move on to make sure that things are ready in good time. But what do you guys think about this shipping container? Is it from, you know, that artist's impression that we have there? Is it something that you think looks good? Do you think it will be there long term? Or do you think it's a short term fix for a long term problem? Let me know your thoughts down below. OK, so let's have a quick look forward towards the Villarreal game tonight. And I'm actually really excited about this one. One, it feels like the first time in forever that Forrest are playing a home match, a home match at the city ground in a preseason. So if you go in there, you know, make sure you do enjoy it. There are still a lot of tickets available for this one at the time of recording this video. And I think they're going for a tenner. So if you're someone who's been dying to go to the city ground, can't get hold of tickets or whatever, this could be a good opportunity. So go check out the club website there as well. Now, in terms of what I want to see today, with this being our penultimate friendly, it's time to really put the, the old foot to the pedal, the pedal to the metal, whatever the saying is. And Forrest and Nuno need to start taking this, for me, a lot more serious. I want to get an idea at the end of this game, at the end of the Olympiacos game, about the shape and the ideas that Nuno is going to implement for that Bournemouth match come um, August the 17th. So I'm hoping against hope he starts with a 4-2-3-1 and I'm intrigued to see what he does with the 6 and the 8 and I think we may see in this match players getting more than 45 minutes starting to get them up towards full match kind of 90 minute tempo pace. Now we may see 70 minutes, 60 minutes for a lot of the players. That's fine. That's the build up we need to see. But who are the 6 and the 8 going to be? I really want to see Sangare alongside Dominguez. It's a combination I can't think of a game where we have seen it before. I think we may have seen it in a three, but never in a two. And I think that could really work. We've seen Danilo and Sangare. That's worked nicely. But Sangare and Dominguez, it just has a nice little ring to it. Who's your six and the eight, man? I think there are so many combos we could go for. And all of them, I think you could put a good argument in case for. There's one who I wouldn't pick in particular, but we're not going to go down that road right now. What I don't want to see is this false nine playing up front. Look, I don't know where Taiwo is. I don't know why we haven't seen him preseason. Uh, he joined the camp in in Spain a couple a week or so ago, but hasn't featured in any of the games. And we don't know if he's going to play tonight. There's been no updates that we've heard of in reference to Taiwo. So if that's the case then one that underlines a need, a greater need for a striker to come to Forest. But it means that we need to see Chris Wood starting. For me personally, I would go with Sangare and Dominguez, Dominguez in the six. I would then put Morgan Gibbs-White in the 10. I'd put Callum Hudson-Odoi on the left. And I would chuck Jutta straight in. Now, for those of you wondering, Jutta's new shirt number is going to be Jono's old shirt number. Or Rainer's old shirt number, if you want to go even more recent. It's number 20. And I would just chuck him in on the right-hand side. Now, do remember, these shirt numbers aren't confirmed. There will and probably what shall be changes um, before the official squad is announced, just before the start of the Premier League. But I'm really excited to see the Portuguese Grealish. And I'm hoping against hope he gets at least a few minutes there. Now, he has been playing, so he should be match sharp and match fit as well. And can slot straight in and won't need that build up um, for a preseason as much as maybe some other players who have been at Euros and what have you. 
So I'm excited for this game. We'll have the watch along for you tonight at about 7.40. Remember, kickoff is at 8 p.m. And let's hope Forrest really start to push up the gears and we can see what Nuno's cooking because this squad is looking tasty right now. If you've enjoyed the content, as always, if you haven't already, hit that like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new and go check out those tire offers from Lindley's. Go check out the website now. You can book your MOTs there as well. It's in the comments down below. We'll see you for the watch along later on. Come on you Reds.